Hey, VC here. Today we're talking about how to enjoy Yosemite National Park by bike. I live 17 miles from the south gate of Yosemite. I ride from my door to Yosemite National Park. It's freaking amazing. I ride a lot there and I'd love to share some of my knowledge about Yosemite and kind of give you like the cyclist's guide to Yosemite National Park. Let's get it. Okay, so we're gonna break this into five different categories, right? How to get into Yosemite National Park, where to stay, where to ride, when to come, and then my, here's exactly what you should do, my like go-to tip on how to enjoy Yosemite National Park the best. Spoiler alert, it's camping on the valley floor, right? And I'm gonna get more into it, and I actually did a whole video with Jasper, uh, he's another YouTuber where we, it's like a vlog of a two-day, you know, camping trip in Yosemite, it's amazing. But backcountry, they kind of have supported this a little bit. They've helped me out. They sent me and my family some camping gear to enjoy Yosemite even better. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about them later on in the video, but I just wanted to say like, big shout out to backcountry for helping me uh, enjoy Yosemite even more and helping support this video. Okay, so there's three different ways you can get into Yosemite. Really, there's only two entrances, but there's three different roads you can get in. One is 41, and so if you're coming from SoCal or really anything Southern California or like Nevada where you're coming up from like LA type area, that's usually what you're going to take. You're going to go and get on the 41 and uh, come in through Southgate. That's near my home. That's where I ride up to Yosemite is via 41. They actually just repaved the road. It's immaculate. If you're coming from Northern California, usually you're going to come in either through 140 or 120. They sort of like merge together at the end, uh, but I believe it's 120 is where if you were coming from like Nevada, uh, Francis and Lawrence and Bike Fit James, they, when they did their big old trip, they came in through Death Valley, through the 120, through Levining. They came in on like the east side right? But if you're coming from Northern California, usually you're going to come in through like Modesto area and then cut across the 140, which is cool, which is great and all, but essentially you miss tunnel view if you come in that way. 41 is what it takes you through the iconic tunnel view and your first view into the, the valley is just spectacular. So if there was any advice, I would say your first time coming into Yosemite, go 41, go Southgate, if you go the other ways, it's fine. You can just, you just have to drive up to tunnel view, but it sort of like spoils the view a little bit. I don't have a lot of information on where to stay because I've, I, I live near here, so I've never really done hotels in Yosemite, but if you're coming up through the 41, um, staying in my hometown, Bass Lake, is actually maybe one of the best ways to do it just because you are a little bit of way from Yosemite. You're not actually in Yosemite National Park, uh, but Bass Lake is a phenomenal town and there's a lot you can do that doesn't actually include Yosemite. Uh, one thing though is to avoid, don't stay in Oakhurst, okay? Uh, Oakhurst is, is not really that amazing, but when you're looking at possibly staying in Yosemite, a lot of, of stuff hypes up Oakhurst as it's like the gateway to Yosemite. It's not that great um, and it's pretty far actually. It's almost like a good 45 minute to hour drive to get from Oakhurst into what you would consider as Yosemite. Um, you can stay a little bit further closer to Southgate uh, at Tanaya Lodge. That gets kind of expensive. You can stay in the hotels down in Yosemite. I think Big Pines Lodge, Big Trees Lodge, or like what, what was the Wawona Lodge. That's not really in the valley in Wawona. Uh, there's still a good, like on a bike, it's an hour climb, depending on your pace, to even just get down into the valley. If you come in through 120 or 140, there's a lot of other hotels, but they are expensive. I mean, that's just like straight up, they're pretty expensive. So depending on how much comfort you want, right? Here's the thing though, is that you gotta get your 
ticket in early, man. Uh, they sell out quick. So if you're thinking, hey, I'm just gonna take a quick little weekend trip and, and you're trying to book a place Friday night during the summer, one, it's probably not gonna happen at all. And if you do find a place, it would be like $300 a night in a busted hotel an hour away from Yosemite. But again, in what I'm gonna to allude to, which I think is the best, is to just straight up camp. The camping spots are like 20 bucks a spot. I mean, there's just, they're not expensive at all. There's actually a little hiking only spot where it's six bucks a person. And come on, dude, that's, that's ridiculous. But obviously you need some gear and equipment to enjoy that. We used backcountry.com to get all of our camping supplies. We got a really sweet tent that you could stand up in, a hammock, a uh, percolator, like a sleeping pad. But if you don't want to completely rough it as, you know, a straight tent, you can get what's a, called a tent cabin. They're pretty expensive and they're not really what you think. They're more along the lines of a tent than a cabin. But Yosemite does offer tent cabins and it has like legit beds in there and stuff. But it gets really cold and they're really not that fancy. Okay, so when to come. Now, there is a good part of the year where Glacier Point is not accessible. Road's closed, it's full of snow. Depending on when you come, you, you might not even be able to see one of the greatest sights on the planet. But when you come when Glacier Point is open, usually it's slammed and it's super busy. I would suggest you come early May or late October. Those are probably the best times to come. The weather is is still really good. Like early May, late October, you might not even need any warmers whatsoever, just like jersey and pant and, and shorts, whatever. You might need to bring like a jacket or something depending on what time you're riding, like early mornings, obviously a little bit colder. Uh, but early May, late October, that's when the crowds are not gonna be that heavy. Um, lodging isn't gonna be that expensive. Weather's still really good and everything's open. Now there is a super secret special week which is glacier point road open to bikes only there is no set date for this i've done two videos on it it's literally the greatest thing you could ever do as a human but they only give you like a three-day notice when they're gonna open it they have to clear the snow depends on the snowpack usually opens between april early april late may again depending on the weather but so they will announce it tuesday night hey, it's open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to bikes only. So there's, it's a total crapshoot, but if you come sometime late April, early May, there is a chance that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Glacier Point Road is closed to cars, only open to bikes, so you could sit literally on top of Glacier Point with no one there, it's insanity. But again, you don't know until Tuesday, so you can't really book your trip if you're coming from far it's just sort of a crapshoot. All right, so let's talk about the meat of the video, which is like where to ride, how to ride, how to experience it, all things cycling. If you're coming just for a day trip, let's just start with, uh, I'm only coming for a day, I'm not staying the night. There's uh, maybe two options for you. One, which is what I usually do, is I stop, uh, I, bring, I bring people into the Wawona Lodge. That's where we park, or Big Trees Lodge, okay? We park there and we ride from Wawona into the valley, Starting from Wona, there's an hour climb that is, it's not really that scenic. You're just in the trees. It's its very comparable to really any other mountain road you've ever been on. And traffic isn't amazing depending on the year. Uh, I mean, it's safe, but still, you know, you're looking at an hour ride, an hour climb, climb from Wona to the fork, which you go up to Glacier or down to the valley. And so then I really like doing this because I'll go over and, and you climb for an hour, you descend towards tunnel view, and it's sort of this like prep, like you've had to work to get to this amazing viewpoint, right? And that is just one of the greatest moments if you've never been to Yosemite, even if you've been, to, I've been a ton of times and this moment still just gets me, dude, which is I've been riding for about an hour and 20 minutes, I'm descending, I go into the tunnel, it's dark, it's scary, and then all of a sudden you blow out to tunnel view. And it's just like, bam, in your face. And it's it's incredible. You're, you're just like struck with awe of the universe. 
you can hang out there, you can get your pictures, and then you can go down and loop the valley, which is super duper cool. I would say that if you had to make a decision, and this is where the decision comes in, because if you go to the valley and then try to go back up to Glacier Point, that's a big climb, the big ride. Starting from Wona to the valley, up to Glacier, back to Wona, almost 90 miles. Um, I think it might be over a little over 90 miles, and it is a ton of climbing. So that's a massive ride. But if, if that's too much for you, you're gonna have to make a decision to either go from Wawona up to Glacier and back, which is like a two hour climb. Um, again, a lot of climbing. Glacier Point just has such an amazing view. The payoff is amazing. But the valley to me is, is a better choice. The valley is very easy to ride. I mean, it's just flat. It's, it's a, it's a one-way, I mean, you could just loop around the valley. There's actually a spot where it's, it's closed to cars always year round. And then you can take like a pretty good little five mile loop with no cars on a paved road. It's insane. That's at the end of the loop. So when it says like closed road, just keep riding. So one of my tips would be, I would say, you know, if you're going to drive in just for the day, maybe drive all the way into the valley and just park in the valley so that you could possibly start in the valley, ride all the way up to Glacier Point, which is again about a two hour climb. It's pretty, it's like 4,500 feet of climbing. Uh, see Glacier Point, descend down, which would end up being like an hour and a half descent, phenomenal. Uh, and then get back in your car and leave. It just, uh, the thing is that when you drive into the valley, you're gonna ruin your tunnel view experience. So there's that. Okay, but let me give you what I think is the best way to experience Yosemite. Experiencing it in just a one-day trip is a little much. It's uh, It gets to be a pretty big effort, and if you've driven really far, sometimes you might have to choose between Glacier Point or the Valley, which again, like I said, I would side with the Valley over Glacier Point uh, if you had to choose. If you don't have to choose, that one big ride is pretty massive, and you, you're not in the moment. And that's what you need, man. You need to be in the moment and just there in the valley taking in these, these vibes that just clean your soul. <laughs> it's amazing. So you want to camp on the valley floor. That's the ticket. It's, it's very inexpensive to get a camping spot. Okay, obviously you need a little bit of gear to do that. Backcountry helped me make my camping trip way better. So we got a really nice tent from backcountry, very tall. Watch this. Boom, sucker. I'm standing up in my tent. I'm standing up in my tent. Look how much room I have for activities. We also got a hammock, hooked that up between the trees. I wasn't actually the first time I ever set up a hammock, but so I, I set that up, swung around in it. Just amazing after you get done with your ride to be able to just hang out in the hammock. We got a little percolator. Uh, for coffee, because coffee is life. My wife got a crazy Patagonia jacket because it was a little bit cold in the morning. Uh, she was digging that. Tell me about your jacket. It's so amazing. It's so soft and comfy, and it's the warmest jacket ever. I slept in it, and I've been wearing it nonstop. It's like the rest of my body is cold, but my this part is warm and cozy. It's so nice. <laughs> But for you, the best way to experience it, maybe two days on the valley floor to like stay two nights so that you can have a full day of just exploring the valley, then maybe a day where you go up to Glacier Point. And if you're staying in the valley, what's so, even if you have a family, they have a closed, like I said, a closed loop, perfectly paved. It's phenomenal. They have so many little trails that you can take your one-year-old on, right? I mean, it's not, you could, even if you're not a, a, an avid cyclist, or whatever bike, some busted bike. There is a lot of options on the valley floor for you to experience and ride around free of traffic. And even when you do ride on the main road, it's two lanes and it's it's all one way. So you kind of can just like ride side by side and take up the whole road because people can just go around you. It's not it's not that big of a deal. No one's no one's mad that you're in the way because everyone's just staring at these amazing rocks. So 100% camping on the valley floor is the ticket it's the way to go that would be my main suggestion because you can take in much more of the environment i'm going to post a few strava links down below to kind of let you see 
the profiles and some of the riots that I've done before. And I'm going to link some other videos that are more about like actually riding in Yosemite. Just kind of, you know, like the cars, uh, the no cars day and just like a, a full video of the descent. A lot of other assets or videos that you can check out if you're trying to plan a trip. Uh, real quick, mountain biking. There's not really, or at least I'm not aware of a ton of amazing mountain biking trails in that area. Uh, a lot of the trails are like kind of outside of what you would consider Yosemite, outside of the valley. Down here in Bass Lake, there's a ton of amazing trails that all tie around. So if you're looking more for mountain biking, maybe like aggressive mountain biking, not just whatever, uh, I would almost say stay in Bass Lake because you could ride from your cabin in Bass Lake and go do 007 and Mary Jane and Willow Creek and, and Goat Mountain. Uh, there's a ton of trails around here that are very awesome. Uh, and then you could just drive or take a shuttle bus because they have the Yart bus that takes you from Bass Lake uh, into Yosemite. So you could, uh, you could do that. If you decide to come here, hit me up, man. I honestly am in Yosemite a lot. So maybe we could ride together. And again, I want to say a huge thanks to Backcountry for helping me and my family have an amazing camping trip. And if you want to watch the whole vlog on that trip, it's linked below. So, guys, thank you so much. Vegan Cyclist. Yeah.